Alrighty, take out your assignment from yesterday, page 386, and we'll kind of go step by step and go through those. You can check your own today, but I really need you to get into the habit of showing your work. No matter what you're doing, show your work. Don't try to shortcut it. It becomes really obvious when you, uh, when you are trying to shortcut things and uh, it just catches up with you. Okay, so don't worry about saving paper. You got lots of paper. Alrighty. So here we go. Starting with these first ones, this is where you just simply have to verify is this point a solution of both of these equations? Okay. So let's look at number two right here. That one should be a no. It works in the first one as I tested, but not in the second one. Number three is a yes because it worked in both, as is four. Okay. So that first little chunk. It goes no, yes, yes. Then I had you skip to nine. So take a jump to number nine. Now I know the odds are in the back of the book, but right away when you check it in the very first one, as you're watching things, it doesn't work in the first one. Watch your signs, but it doesn't work. Number 10, that one is a yes. It does work in both of the equations, as does 11. All right. Now, starting with number 12, you have to do some graphing. Find where these two cross each other or where that point of intersection is. Okay? So here's number 12. You should have two lines graphed. So take a look at your accuracy here. Okay? Here's this line, um, 1 half x plus 2. And here's the other one, which is a negative 1x minus 1. Now that you got those two, you find the point of intersection where they cross. It's over here, quadrant two at negative two, one. And when you go ahead and check it algebraically by substituting the values in, it works in each of the equations. All right, let's look at some of your other graphs. Here's 13. Not sure if they showed you the graph in the back of the book because um, it's an odd, but here are your two lines. You have y equals negative 1x plus 6 and y equals x. Hey, cool. Do you notice something about the slopes of these guys? This one has a slope of negative 1. This one has a slope of positive 1. Negative 1 times positive 1 is negative 1, which means these two lines are perpendicular to each other. Cool. The only way you know that is mathematically by proving it with this property that we discovered last chapter. All right, now take a look. Where do these guys intersect? It should be at 3, 3. And as you test it in each of those lines, you find out that it also checks out algebraically. All right, here's 14. And here's what's happening. Both of these lines have negative slopes. This first equation, let me get my highlighter back on. The first equation here is already in slope-intercept form. So you're like, okay, cross is at negative 1, my slope is negative 2. The second equation has x by itself. So that looks a little weird. I mean, you can always set up a table of values, but honestly, the best thing to do is get it in slope-intercept form, which looks like this. y equals negative 1x plus 3. Get this sucker graphed. There's your y-intercept. The slope is negative 1. They cross, but they cross way over in quadrant number 2. If you do this on graph paper where it's more accurate rather than mine, which kind of looks like uh, things are curving, which I shouldn't, the solution should be negative 4, 7. Okay, negative 4, 7. Question 15. Okay, two lines again. This first one, x plus y equals 2. In slope-intercept form, it looks like this. Okay, so go ahead and graph it. Negative 1, slope, y-intercept is 2. Second equation, the y-intercept is negative 4, and the slope is positive 1. These guys end up intersecting at 3, negative 1. Check it out. Algebraically. All right. 
Now you get into 16. This is a word problem. So for 16, you've got to do some setting up and understanding of what's going on here. Um, I'm trying to remember if this is like these guys are training and running or something like that. So Angelo's situation is he's already running 7 miles. He's going to increase it by a mile a week. Mark, 4 miles, 2 miles a week. And so your job is trying to figure out when will these guys be the same. So if you go ahead and graph them, here's what happens. Okay, at 3 weeks you're going to find out that their distance is the same at 10 miles. Now you can graph it, okay, which is kind of the plan. If you had done that, give yourself some room. Or, or you could also create a table of values here, x and y, and do it for each equation and see what happens, okay? So if we call this one Angelo at 1, you get 8. At 2, you get 9. At 3, you get 10. See how it's going up by 1s? That's because it's a 1 every week. Increase by 1, increase by 1. Now, for Mark, he's starting out at 4. So at the first week, we're going to add 2 more now. That'll be 6. At 2, you have 4 plus 4 is 8. At 3, you get 4 plus 6, that's 10. Winner, winner, chicken dinner, there you go, okay? The x value is the weeks, the y value is miles, so that's why we say at 3 weeks, their distance is the same at 10 miles. Alright, then I said go ahead, jump to 28, we'll do a little of this review, okay? So check yours. 28 is B, 29 is H, 30, you get B is 1. Now is some review of some equation solving. So for number 33, you should end up with X being 42. Number 34, you should get negative 60. 35, you get a decimal, 2 and 2 tenths, that's fine. And 36, you solve that one, you also get a decimal, 4 and 8 tenths. Or if you left it as a uh, fraction, it would be 4 and 4 fifths. Or even as an improper fraction, 24 fifths. Okay? Cool. These last ones are some inequalities, so remembering what happens. Okay? For 37, you solve it, you should get C is less than 5. Now they also said, can you describe that in words? Well, just everything smaller than 5. That's all. For number 38, when you solve it, you should get x is greater than or equal to 27. So everything bigger than 27. Number 39, here's what happens. <clears throat> you subtract 5, you get everything greater than 6. A is greater than 6. Alright, on the number 40, you can either divide the 4 out first, or you could have distributed as well, but you should end up with x is greater than 3. And to graph it, you have an open circle at 3, because it can't include it. Okay. I'm going to try and get it higher, or I'll rewrite it over here, because as I'm thinking about this. Okay. For number 40, you should get x is greater than 3, which means you have an open circle at 3, and then we're going to shade to the right, so fill in the arrowheads, and go from there, okay? Alright, I'm doing this at home on my new toy, so if I'm bouncing around and my big fat head is in the way, I apologize. I'm just trying to get used to it and to figure out a way. That if I need to extend the screen, I can. Alrighty? As always, good luck and may the force be with you.